Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. Now, they're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. About 170. No, it's worth more than that. There's an alternative. You can gamble and go to auction. That way, I think I may get you a little bit more money. Goes 190. Today, the show comes to you from Enfield. Local people have turned up in large numbers. You know why they're here. They want to gamble or take cash home in their pockets, but either way, they want the real deal. We're ready to crack on with another busy day in the dealer's den. What's Joy got for dealer Henry Nichols? Well, I've bought a silver and leather clock in. Hope to get, hmm, I don't know, three or four hundred, hopefully. But will Henry think it's worth it? Shall we reveal to the world what we've got in this rather splendid looking case here? Yes, please. Oh, look at that. Isn't that delightful? You like it? I love it. What's the history of it, Joy? It's been in my house, my mum and dad's house, for as long as I can remember. Right. And I just inherited it from them. Fantastic. Have you ever had it working? Yes, but I haven't bothered a lot recently. Well, it's in remarkably good condition. It's a bedside clock, really, but people, you could actually use it for travelling because it's got its fitted case. I wondered case. if it was a travel yeah. clock. Um, it's obviously in silver. Let's yeah. just turn it round here. Yes, I've seen the marks, but yep, don't know there we go. We've got a little silver mark just there at the front. Um, with the assay office is Birmingham. Oh, right. And the date letter would put it to about 1927. Yes, so typical Art Deco. Right. When they got married, 1929. Okay, okay. I mean, it could have been a wedding present. Yes, I think it probably yeah. was in that case. It's just lovely. The case has suffered a little bit over the years, but if you were that old, I think you'd have a few knocks and bangs anyway. What's the reason for you getting rid of it? I'm trying to downsize and right. get rid of all these lovely treasures my mum had, right. but uh, can't take them all with me. Well, we'll see if you can help you out here. I'm going to put some money on the table. Lovely. And we'll do what we can. 20, 40, 60, 80. Am I getting close? One. A little way to go, yeah. A little way to go, yeah. Well, 20, quite a little way to go. <laughs> 40, <laughs> 60, 80, 200. Am I getting warmer? Warmer. Warmer. Oh, that's a good sign. 220, 240. How does 240 seem to you, Joy? It's nearly there. Hi, David. Right. Let me tell you what the independent values of the auctioneer and what I think about it. They say 150 to 200 pounds, the independent valuers. I'm going to say rubbish. <laughs> What's on the table? Two, two, 240. 240. Can I squeeze you for 20 quid more on behalf of this lady? You're going away with a super lock. There is a little bit of work to be done. But a quality client will look at that. Magnifique. Thank you. Thank you, David. David said another 20. Can I meet you in the middle and say another 10 to make it 250? 250. Do we have a deal? We do. We Fantastic. Have a deal. I love Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. The, the silver clock was delightful, but it's the sort of item that we won't have any trouble selling at all. So I'm delighted with that. Henry's a lovely chap. Got round me, I think. I let him go for, for too little. <laughs> well, he's a charming one, that Henry. Our next item is quite a rarity. What does Debbie Serple make of it? Early books always intrigue me. I'm not quite sure, to be honest, where to pitch this one at, but um, I think we'll just have to tickle the market and see. John, thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Debbie. Yeah, nice to meet you. Tell me about the book. Um, well, it's my wife's book, actually, and we've had it for quite a while, but we don't know anything about it. The first thing I learned about it today was it's 1602, which is pretty old. It's one of these things that totally fascinates me, but I'm not a book dealer. Ah. Um, but if we open the front, there's a lot of handwritten work going on. Yes. And 
we've got a date of 1602 down the bottom, but there appears to be at least two hands of handwritten work on the front. Yeah. There's a very strong hand here with the date of 1766 in brown ink, which looks as though it's the hand of an adult. And below it, there's a rather sweet hand of a Richard Carew, who looks to me as though it's a child. Now, whether the child is related to this person, we don't know. Oh, I see, yeah. So, again, it, I'm totally fascinated, but I am in the dark. All that we can say is it does appear to be a survey of Cornwall yes. in, in um, a printed style. I love it. It is in a bit of a sorry state. Yeah. And a book dealer would probably not be terribly pleased with, you know, the spine and, you know, the state but of the, the thing itself. 400 years but then old. you're talking about a very, very early book. So I will make you an offer. I do like it very much. Yes. And we'll see how we go. 20. 40. 60 pounds. Um, no, that's not the figure I was... No? No. 80. 90 pounds. How does that seem? I would still like a bit more than that, to be honest with you. A lot more? Well, not a lot more, but... So if I took the 10 away and replaced it with a 20, how would you feel about that? Let's do it. So we've now got 100 on the table. Um, Here comes that, well, David. Well, I was looking for a bit more than that because I think it's unique. It's a unique book. I hear what you're saying. I can tell you as a dealer I have no experience in this particular area. And the estimation from our independent value as an auctioneer is 80 to 120. Now, I look at that and think, well, that doesn't sound a lot of money for a rather nice leather tooled uh, book from 1602 talking about Cornwall. If you feel strongly, I'm going to say to you, put it to the auction, put it to the room, let the room decide. If, if it goes to auction, would I do more research on this book? Well, I, I can't guarantee that they will do a lot of research. What they will do is they will put word out to their book dealers who attend on a regular basis their auction, and they will draw it to their attention. So there you are, you've had your advice. It is a very specialist item you brought. It's 400 plus years old. I think I'll do that. I All think right, I'll go John. to auction, yeah? Lovely. Good luck. Thank Thanks for much. coming Thank in. Thank you, offer. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Let's hope some of those book experts have turned up at the auction. The reserve is 80. Bit of a gamble. Is it going to pay dividends? Will it get over the 80? It is coming up now. It really is a, a bit of social history, this. Let's see what happens. I'm glad to say somebody seems to have spotted it because I've got a left bid of £80. We're straight in at 80 Straight in at 80 It's at the reserve. So one person really liked this and left a bid with the auctioneer. And I'll take 85 and £80 for this little book. £80, 85 90 95 100 110 120 130 140 Press bidding 150 160 170 180 190 200 they are going for this, aren't they? On some place. £200. It's a £200 bid, with me at £200. At £200, I'm going to sell it. You all done and finished. At £200, it goes for £200. OK, Gabble's gone down at £200. Good result. It's fantastic. I've got a smile. OK, nice smile on your face. Take away the commission. I make that about £164. That's lovely. That's happy? Brilliant. Yeah, I'm very Smile happy. Smile on your face? Yeah, because I've got to give it to the wife. <laughs> got to give it to the wife? What else can you do? Well, that's what you're supposed to do anyway, <laughs> isn't it? OK, so you're going home with £164 after turning down £100. Wait till your wife hears about this. You have a smile on her face, too. And I've met the real deal as well. And you've met the real deal. Next up, an unusual pair of leg irons has arrived at Brenda Haller's table. Typical. They give me this sort of thing. Don't 
Who is going to be tied up today? Kevin, 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 what have you been doing with these? I wouldn't like to say, would I? No. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> well, where did you get them from? I got them from an auction right. in Maidstone in 1992. That's a long time. Yes, and they've just been in a drawer ever really? since. Really? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Well, <laughs> not saying anything. No. <laughs> They're actually um, policemen ankle shackle chains. Right. And they're, they're actually dated 1910. Wow. And the key, they work perfectly. Do they? Yeah. I'm not going to test them. <laughs> not I'm yet. not letting you test them on me, <laughs> that's for sure. Not likely. <laughs> All right. Now, why are you selling them? They're just in a drawer, is just that right? Just in a drawer, yeah. yeah. What would you do with the money if I gave you some money? Well, I'm going to Brighton for the weekend. Oh, lovely. Yeah. With you and your family? Uh, well, with a lady friend. Well, oh. <laughs> Are you sure you don't need these to go to Brighton with? <laughs> I'm not saying. Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure. We'll get serious. Oh. The purse is out, then. Okay. And we're away. We're away. We're away. <laughs> OK. £20. £40. A little bit more? Now, do I want them to have all the hassle in my <laughs> business of people coming and saying, let's tie you up, Brenda? I'm not sure. It could be a talking point. It they? could be a talking point. And, and a novelty as well. <laughs> Just for the novelty. Yeah. £50, Kevin. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'll deal with that. You'll deal with that? Yeah. What did you pay for them at auction? Well, there was two other pairs of police handcuffs yeah. and for the, the whole box, 10 quid. Well done. But that's a long time ago. 20, 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got a profit, I've got a profit. Probably. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> OK, then. Thanks a lot, Brenda. <laughs> Off the cuff, I'd say that was a great deal, Kevin. Coming up, Debbie disses the goods. The condition in which these two pieces of early porcelain are in is absolutely horrendous. I am being unkind in the sense that I'm thinking I really don't want to pay a lot of money because to me they're not worth a lot. Oh dear. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Enfield. Let's see what's arrived on Michael Hogman's table. Nice little nine karat gold pocket watch. You know what the sad thing about this sort of stuff is? Straighten them out in pot. That's a bit harsh, Hoggy. It won't be going anywhere unless Colin gets the price he has in mind. Hopefully, it will bring a nice bit of money, 300 to 350, something like that. So, will they be able to agree on a deal? Colin, gold pocket watch and chain? Yes. Where did you get it from? It was my late father's. Yeah. And in those days when they were fashionable, wear them in the, inside the waistcoat pocket. But since he's died, I mean, they've, they've gone out of fashion. Yeah. And uh, it's been in the drawer at home. And, uh, Sad, isn't it? Well, these, these things happen, don't they? Well, it's a fact they're, of life, yeah. really. The times move on. We're yeah. now on digital watches, aren't we? You know, yeah. they're automatics. These ones you have to wind up. And... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're digressing. Let's talk about the watch. Nine karat gold chain. Right, yes. Uh, nine karat gold charm, unhallmarked, but we're almost sure it's nine karat, right, aren't we? Right. And then we've got the watch here, which is also uh, a gold watch with the enamel dial. Do we know if it works? Yes, it does work. Oh, it does work. Okay, well, that always helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Good. Second hand's going round now. Yeah, let's get some money out then, shall we? Our does 50, 100, 150 sound. Very nice, but I think I'd like a bit more, please. A bit more? Yes, yes. Let's get another pile out then, see what else we got. How about 170? No, it's worth more than that. I want to buy it, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. So 170, 190. No. I, I'm getting near. Well, you are getting nearer, but not. How much more do you want? Quite a bit more. Let's go. Right. Yes. So we got uh, 190 there. Let's round that up to 200. And then we start again here. 250, 300 quid. Could go a little bit more. 320. Well, I won't do 320. I'll tell you what I will do. 310, and that is going to be my final offer, Colin. It's a good offer. Um, OK, that's a deal. Yeah, you sure? Yeah, if you well, think about the commission at an auction and that, I think that's pretty oh, good. Yes, I'll, yeah, I'll realise all that, yeah. 
Colin did the right thing selling that to me because there's nowhere you can go with stuff like that now. It's straight to the melting pot and I'll make 20, 30 quid. Hoggy seems confident. We'll see if he succeeds later on. Next up on Debbie's table, it's Karen. And what have you brought us? A couple of figurines that have been up in the loft for about 15 years and um, I'm hoping to sell them for a, a real, real good price. The condition in which these two pieces of early porcelain are in is absolutely horrendous. People don't want damaged pieces. They're very, very fussy when it comes to early, early bow porcelain. Do you have huge expectations for them? Well, I did, yes, but I know they're, they're, they're quite damaged, I think. I, d I am a pottery dealer. And when I say pottery, I tend not to be a dealer in porcelain. And these two pieces fall under the category of porcelain, which is much finer. And they're bow, but they have the worst damage I think I've seen for an awful long time. I mean, for example, this man would have been holding his sword and he looks like um, Captain Hook at the moment <laughs> because whoever restored him has drilled a hole through where once there was a hand, stuck a piece of metal in and attached his sword to it. And I doubt very much that this is the original sword. Okay. So that's one thing. And then here, there would have been something around his shoulder, whether it was, um, I don't know, a floral decoration or a, a banner or something, which in the books they would have been very well documented and one would be able to find out what it was that was on there but it's entirely missing i am being unkind in the sense that i'm thinking i really don't want to pay a lot of money because to me they're not worth a lot so let's put some money on the table and you can be as rude as you like and you know you have the option of going to auction okay, okay. so 20 40 50 pounds. Do you feel about that? No. No? Um, I'll make you one more offer and I'm, I expect you to say no, to be honest. So that's 60 quid and my purse is shut. What do you feel about that? Want to go to auction? Yes, definitely. You know, you never know. They may do really well at auction, but I, I am worried about the damage. Um, okay. So. I wish you all the best and I'll thank look, look and see how you get on. Okay, thank Take you. care. The deal was terrible. Um, I know they were damaged, but I, I hope to have got um, a lot more for them. Um, so I'm looking forward to going to auction and see what um, we can do there. Well, fear not, Karen. Our auctioneer, William Rouse, has much higher hopes for them. They are a bit damaged, but I think there are people who will see that at least that they're, they're very rare and you m we might get a pleasant surprise out. Fingers crossed. Let's head over to the cell room and find out. There is a reserve of £200. Now, £200 for a figure at fault or damaged is maybe just perhaps a little bit ambitious. Is it good at the reserve of 200 or is that being too ambitious? Well, let's find out. It's coming up now. Got a bit of interest to start me, I'm in at £140. 150, 160, 170. Needs to go a bit better than that. £170, 170. 180, I've got one more, 190. 200 in the room. 200, just in time. You had it right on the money there. At £200 in the room then. In the room, £200. Anybody else? 200 then. 200. The gavel has gone down at £200. Are you satisfied? I saw that look, mm, maybe, so... Not, well, yeah. Not bad. I suppose. OK, take away the commission. I make that about £164. Is that going to satisfy you? Yeah, <laughs> I suppose so. Did you see that look? Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, I, I sense you are a little bit disappointed, Karen. The problem is today, the cost of restoration is really expensive. And so that makes it very, very difficult. On the day, you're going home with a real deal of 164 quid. Over at Henry's table, he's up against Mark, who knows exactly what he wants. 
Yeah, I've bought two sovereigns in and a two pound coin. I need 800. What's the history of them? Well, I collect coins. Right. And I've been collecting them for a number of years. Yeah. And I just thought, as Dickinson's real deal was coming to Enfield, I'll uh, bring these in and see what I can do with them. Fantastic. OK, well, let's have a look at what we've got. Um, we've got here a two pound coin, which is the 60 year anniversary of the Blitz in London. That's right, yeah. And you've got St Paul's Cathedral on the, on, the, on the front here with all the searchlights sort of, you know, straddling it. And then we go down to this one here, which we've got St George and the Dragon there. Yeah. Now, these are all proof coins, OK? Now, with proof coins, the important thing is never to handle the coin. The reason being, as you probably well know, yeah. acid on your fingers can actually affect the surface of the coin, yeah. and coin collectors such as yourself yeah. want them uncirculated, untouched, That's right. absolutely mint. They're all quite modern coins. As much as they're proof coins, that might add a small premium to the value, but ostensibly it's the value of the gold we're looking at. I don't know whether you've got thoughts on what you're hoping to get, but I'm going to put some money on the table. OK. 50, 100. 150, 200. 250, 300. 350, 400. 450, 500. 550, 600. 650, 700. 750, straight in, 800 pounds. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad oh, so I'm in the, in the right area. We're in the ballpark. In the ballpark, say, OK. Yeah. I'll be happy with a bit more. With, with a bit more. I still have nightmares with people saying, just a bit more. <laughs> 850. I'll settle for another 20. Another 20. Oh, we'll deal. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll meet you halfway. 860. Do we have a deal? Yeah, OK. Mark, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Good to see you. went very well. I didn't expect him to go to the 800 in the first go. So I was well pleased because that's what I wanted. And we went a little bit above. I've given all the money for them. Um, I think there's probably about £10 profit left in it for me, but it's £10 I didn't have in the first place. So, result. Result indeed, Henry. But only once you've sold them for a profit. Coming up, there's always two sides to a deal. If we turn that round now, then we can start buying that side of the car. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Next up to face a dealer is Judy. Today I've brought along a Jardinier, and before I came here, I thought it was worth about a grand. Big name, big players, big pop, nice big lump, big price on the way. I can just see it in my old way, with an Aspidistra spouting out of it. Do you know what? So can I. Lovely. It's Minton. It is Minton. And it's called Mayolica. Yeah. Tell me what you know about it. Well, no, it's about 1870-something, I think. OK. Yeah. And I know that it's very beautiful. So where's it been hiding? It's been hiding in my wardrobe. In your wardrobe. It's too heavy to pick up. But when you look at this sort of item, you can almost tell straight away it's Minton by the colours they use. Yeah. And just this lovely treacle glaze. Issues, really, is that we've got hairline crack quite bad here, which I'm sure you know about. And all in all, it's just got a little bit of age wear, nicks, knacks, cracks and chips in it. Yeah. Just very minor. You can't even point them out, but we all know they're there. Yeah. Eight or nine years ago, this would have made quite a lot of money. I'm sure you know that. Well, today it's going to make quite a lot of money. Well, it's a lot, a lot of things. It's gone out of fashion. Let's have a look. What should we do? How about... I like that colour. Do you like this colour? Yeah. I do as well. It's my favourite colour. 50, 100, 50, 200, 250. Oh, come on, OK. You can do better. All right, 300. It's a big lump, I like a big lump. Is that me you're speaking about, the big lump of that? It's David Hill, Albia. Well, I've just heard the immortal words. <laughs> it's a big lump, <laughs> and I like a big lump. Minton yeah. Majolica. Minton was all the go ten years ago. The Americans were potty for it. Sadly, today, 
the market has receded considerably. Three to five hundred pounds is one estimation, four to six hundred pounds is another estimation. Three hundred quid, yeah. a bit on the low side, even with a crack in it. It's a big lump. It's a lovely lump. It's, it's a, a lovely beautiful. lump. And he might want to put down the diamond geezer a little <laughs> bit more money. Otherwise, we can gamble and go to auction. But I warn you, it's difficult to sell at the moment. Thank you, Dave. Oh, Judy. Well, there's 300 there, Judy. And in all honesty, my advice, take it to auction, get more money. Yeah. My 300 seems quite mean. I think you'll do quite well at auction. Yeah, your 300 does seem quite mean. I wish you well. I really do. Thank you very much. And if much. you don't sell at auction, I've got 300 quid on the table for it any time. OK, that's All right. Steve. Judith Majolica of ours was a nice lot 10 years ago with no damage. She should have taken my money. It wasn't a bad offer, but it was a bit mean to what I expected. So I've decided to take it to auction. But he's a lovely, cuddly chap, isn't he? What? Our hoggy Judy? You can have him. But first, let's see if there's any takers in the cell room for the jardinier. These are difficult times with something like this, but you never know. 300 was uh, turned down. Let's see what happens. Here we go. OK. A couple of hundred pounds to start me, 200 to go. 200 I bid, 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 250. We stop. It's slowed down at 250. It needs to be a bit more. At 250 pounds. Still with me then at 250. At 250 pounds. 250. Sadly, on the day, the damage I think was holding it back in a market which is pretty slow at the moment. Yeah. 300 pounds. Michael Hogburn. That was the real deal. Michael, you're getting better at this, mate. That was the real deal. Back with Brenda, and she seems a little wound up about her next item. Tick tock. I've got two clocks. Really, really nice. But they're going to be a lot of money. Hello, Alan. Hello, Brenda. How are you? Nice to Give see you. Give me your hand. And what's all this then? Uh, Were uh, you in the uh, Navy? Uh, no. I had them done when I was 11 years old. No. And I got six in that hand and six in that hand I bet of you the did. best at school. <gasps> We don't want any 11-year-olds doing it now. No, no, very strong words, Will, and, and... I can imagine. OK, so they're so carriage clocks? They're carriage clocks, and, yeah. I, and uh, obviously I was told this one's about 1900, and that yeah. one's about 1930. 30. Yeah, and this one is a double-sided? Yeah, the double-sided. Is... A lot of people said they've never seen a double-sided. Very side. unusual, so it's very nice. unusual. I've seen one or two before, oh. but you know, I didn't think I'd see one today, to be honest. Right. This one is gilded. Quite often people think that these are going to be the most expensive because it's got all the detail on it. Oh, well, that, that, that fancy sort of work on yeah, it. Yeah, but other people like the, just the plainness of them. Oh, right, I see. Now, what they should have, which I bet you haven't got, are the carrying cases with them. I haven't got, no, no. Do they come in cases? Yes, because they're travelling clocks. You put them, they would be in a leather case. Right. And you could just open the front and see the time. Oh, I and see. And this was it. So it's called a carriage Very clock. Very bulky to carry it over for just a... Uh... Well, what did they used to do? They used to take trek chests of drawers and all sorts of travelling. You know, they had the servants yeah. to do it, didn't That's they? That's true, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Well, what are you going to do with the money if I give you some money? Well, excite me. Don't you start. Don't you start. <laughs> right. 50. Is that a good colour? Proper colour, yes. Obviously, there's no, other, there's no other colour that can go higher. OK. 50. 200. 50. 300. 50. 400 pounds. 200 for each clock. Well, I can say you're quite nearly there. But obviously... Uh, I can, think I'm very if we, there. If we turn that round now, then we can start buying that side <laughs> of it. <laughs> You are bad. You are so bad. And then we can see it. Sorry. Are you making room for more money? Is, yeah, that, is just, that your game? Well, it's not my game. I mean, it's what it's worth, and I think there's a good profit there for yourself. £450. We're nearly there, Brenda. Come on. What's it going to take? Another one Put, of those. No, 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 no. We'll split it. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. What's with No, 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 no. I'll do a 20. Put it down, I'll show you. 
All right. That's it. Now I said we split it. 470. 480. No. 475. And you can go home smiling. I smile anyway, sweetheart. 475. 475. 475. You slow and down. The purse is behind where, me. Where do you keep your loose change? I don't. I'm well satisfied with that, Brenda. I'm only pulling you along, but you're a good friend. I love you, my friend. Okay. Lovely to meet you, Alan. Okay, it's been great. Thank you very much. We had fun. She's a lovely lady, and I'm very happy with the price. Do you know, I think there's a little bit of profit in that. Is the now, Brenda? We'll find out just how much later on. Next up, Henry set his sights on owning this stunning silver trophy. I'm desperate to own this piece. It's something I'm definitely going to take home. Not without putting some serious cash down, Henry. I'm probably thinking around about the 2,000 mark. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Enfield. Our last item of the day is causing quite a stir in the room. What have you brought for us, Tony? I've bought in a trophy from my mum's bowls club and uh, I'm probably thinking around about the 2000 mark. The silver bowl is exquisite. I'm desperate to own this piece. It's something I'm definitely going to take home. Henry is desperate to bag this trophy. So the Duke and auctioneer William Rouse are looking on to make sure he lays down enough cash. Tell me about what you brought in today. This is a, a trophy from my mother's bowls club. Right. They want to raise some money for a new extension and uh, to be perfectly honest, they're quite fed up with winning this and having to clean it every six <laughs> months or so. Um, so what they're going to do is hopefully raise some money for the club extension and replace it with a glass bowl. Easier to clean? Certainly, yeah. Fantastic. OK, well, let's have a look at it. What we've got here, we've got what we would call a white metal bowl. Um, the reason we call it white metal is because it's not actually made in England. Uh, it's actually been made in India and it's not marked. Right. So although it's continental silver, we just call it white metal. Right. Now, what we've got here is an item of really super quality. What I love about it are the handles here. We've got these intertwined snakes. They are pretty, aren't they? Yeah. Serpent's heads on either end. And then when we come down to the foot of the bowl, we've got animals here. We've got a boar hunt. We've got a tiger that's killing a deer. That's right, yeah. Um, I like the elephant with the lion as well. The elephant and the lion just around here. It yep. is just lovely. And I love this profuse decoration that we've got here, all the flowers and the, the, the foliage. It's just a super looking object. Uh -huh. So I would date it probably to the 19th century. Uh -huh. um, do you know anything about the history of, of who this knobby is? I don't know. Is? I know that he, he actually left it to the Bowls Club uh, and it's been used as their trophy for the, I think it's the mixed pairs or something, isn't yep, it? Mixed yep, mixed doubles, yeah. Uh, mixed doubles. Um, that's all I really know about it. I saw this coming through the door and I thought, what a splendid looking piece of silver. On close inspection, it would appear to be Indian silver. What do you think about it? A great looking object and furthermore, this has got really good quality engraving, it's got a nice handle, it's on a wooden base. It's something that is definitely going to sell over scrap. Come on, where are you going to place your estimate? Well, I'm afraid we still keep it in the sort of conservative 8 to 1200 sort of region. Independent valuers would say 1000 to 1500. The Duke is saying it's 1500 quid's worth of anyone's money. But Henry is a shrewd judge of quality. Let's see what he brings to the table. Let's see what we can do. 50, one. 50, two. 50, three. 50, four. 50, 500. Are we getting warmer? Not really. Not no. really. Oh dear, that sounds ominous. 50, 600. 650, 700. 750, 800, 850. How does that seem? I think you've still got a fair way to go, actually. A fair way to go? Yes. Ooh, well, how about 900, 950? How does that seem? It's getting closer, but getting still, closer. it's still, you know, uh, I've got a, a rough idea of what I think it's worth. Okay. Here's David. 
Hello there. Tony, a difficult thing to value this. There are two estimations here. Eight to 1,200 is the lower part of the estimate, and 1,000 to 1,500 is the um, other estimation. <laughs> it's certainly, in my opinion, worth well over a thousand pounds but it's got to be sold by one of our dealers and they have to make a profit there's a very good start on the table Henry's a great dealer he's a shrewd dealer and he knows what he's buying and if he buys that he's buying a cracking lot thank you David I mean Dave, what David said is absolutely right it is an exceptional quality item but let's see what we can do see if I can tempt you a bit more so we're at 950 uh -huh. We go to a thousand. Thousand and fifty. Eleven hundred. Eleven fifty. Twelve hundred. Twelve fifty. I'm getting close to where I want to be for it. It's a good item, but I think the top end of its value is going to be fourteen hundred, maybe fifteen hundred at a push. But obviously, I've got the problem of selling it, and I've got to, I've got to make a profit but it's an item that I would love to own. And I think David's coming back in again. Oh, good. <laughs> OK. Well, you know my feelings, Tony. I think it's a whiz-bang object. I think it's great. 1250 is a very, very good offer. But I'd like to see another 50 quid. I think he wants <laughs> to take it home. I think he wants to keep it. 13's my lucky number, actually. And I think the only way to secure this is to get 1,300 quid on the table. And then, Tony, you'll probably say, there's no way I'm going to gamble. If you do gamble, there is a chance that someone can come out of the woodwork and give a good price for this. But it is a real gamble. Thanks Thank for you, your advice. Thank you. So if I put another 50 down, do we have a deal? Yes, we do. There's another 50, that's 1,300. It's a piece I'm going to keep. And I assure you of that, because I love it. I Thanks love very it. much, that's good news. We have a deal. Tony, thank you, very, thank much. you very much indeed. Thank you. It's a privilege to own something of such wonderful quality. And I told you I wasn't going to let it go. That you did, Henry. Well done. Our sellers have walked away with over three and a half thousand pounds for their items. But have our dealers turned a profit on their buys? Well, only one of them. Hoggy managed to bag the gold fob watch for £310, and he thought he knew what he was dealing with. It's straight to the melting pot, and I'll make 20, 30 quid. But the bullion dealer only gave him £295 for it. Better look next time, Hoggy. Brenda gave Kevin a profit on the leg irons and hoped for one herself too. You've got a profit? I've got a profit. Probably, yeah. Well done. But nobody seems to want them. Strange, that. And those carriage clocks she paid £475 for? Do you know, I think there's a little bit of profit in that. Not yet there isn't. You better get on the search for some buyers, Brenda. That leaves us with Henry, and it's been his lucky day. He paid £250 for that Art Deco clock. It's the sort of item that we won't have any trouble selling at all. And he was right, it sold for a tidy profit. What about the coins he paid £860 for? I think there's probably about £10 profit left in it for me, but it's £10 I didn't have in the first place. They outdid his expectations when an American collector snapped them up. Well done, Henry. And of course, he's keeping the cup for himself. We've had a great day. There's been lots of action, lots of fun, lots of buying, lots of selling. That's what we like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.